Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here with Naisha Austin and we're going to be talking about domestic abuse and how she suffered from it as a child. Hello. Hi. Hey, how was life when you were young? Um, pretty bad to be honest. I think uh, it, w it wasn't the best experience as a child. Yeah. I think as an adult now, I'm, I guess, I don't know if haunted is the right word to use, yeah. but you have a lot of memories that affect things you do even now at my age, and it makes it quite hard sometimes. How's life growing up as a child with it? Um, it was it was bizarre really because to look at um, mm. anyone, I mean we were just your bog standard family. Uh, mm. I believe the media term for it is a nuclear family you refer to it mm. as. And um, so it was like me, my mum, my dad and my elder sister. And we had a very comfortable life, you know. My dad earned a lot, my mum earned a lot and we had a lot of holidays. And everybody knew us as a, a lovely family. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously our neighbours knew different because when I talk of domestic violence, I mean, he physically was incredibly violent. And um, Was this towards your mother or towards all of you? It started off with my mum and I remember that you know, he used to, he, it would, he, he'd switch, mm -hmm. like, like, just snap, yeah. and um, it could be anything, she'd be dishing up dinner, and he'd put the mashed potatoes on the plate wrong, so next thing, he's throwing the plate across, across the room, mm. at her, uh, anything, and um, he used to beat her to his satisfaction, if you like, she'd just be like a pulp mm -hmm. on the floor, and, um, my older sister kind of like stepped up in the front line for me. I remember when I was really young, she used to say to me, um, she said, go, Nish, go, go and hide. And um, don't, don't come out if daddy calls you, whatever you do, don't come out. And so I'd do it. And basically, once he was finished with mum, he'd move on to Frankie, my sister. Mm. And by the time he was done with her, he'd have had enough. So he most times wouldn't bother coming looking for me. Yeah. And she kind of stepped up in the front line for me, like you would, exactly. big sister, you're protective, aren't you? And um, just sort of, um, that's how it was. And I mean, when I was sort of about six, I didn't really understand what was going on. She used to make it into a game, mm. and I used to um, crawl behind our shed. There was a really little gap I could just fit into. Yeah. And he, some, he would come and call for me, and I used to... Stayed. Be so proud of myself when Daddy couldn't find me without realising what how, the, you know. So, how did your mum, you know, resolve in sorting out this issue? They were married for 18 years and the abuse was kind of, um, it went on before they were married. Because my nan actually said my mum's mum refused to go to my mum's wedding and a lot mm. of my mum's siblings because they just said, you know, he's a waste of space. And, and, but I think, I guess when you love someone, you kind of accept them for who they yeah. are, what they are. And she's always said to me that when you live your life every day, having it drummed into you that you're a worthless slut and you're a piece of shit and all of this, you, you start to believe it. Mm -hmm. And she psychologically got to the point where she just didn't think she could do any better, yeah. that that was all she was worth. Mm -hmm. And it just when it's literally beaten into you yeah. every single day, I think you kind of just, you accept it as that yeah. is what you are. When was the last time you actually saw your father? I was nine. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, he, was, uh, he wasn't as well as physically violent. I, I witnessed on several occasions him raping my mum. Mm -hmm. And um, my sister Frankie was 14 at the time and he kind of, he sort of went for Frankie to hit her and my mum, I, I don't know, something in her just like light bulb went off and she thought oh. this has to stop and she stuck a knife in him really? and she said you've got five seconds to get out of this house or you're going out in a box really? and obviously he left and then um, he used to the park in the village where I grew up um, it was right near our house and Frankie used to walk me down there. She didn't want to see him, had wanted nothing to do with him, but you know, I was only nine and at the end of the day is my dad. And I don't think when you're that young you kind of understand yeah. what what they've done. And um I used to wait at the park and he'd pull up in his car and I'd get in and Frankie would walk home. And I did this twice and he used to take me out on Sunday and 
on the third time I said to Frankie, I, I can go on my own, <laughs> trying to be like all grown up. I said, I'll, I'll go meet daddy on my own. And I went there and I waited for what I didn't realise was actually two hours mm. and he just didn't show up. Mm. And I just ended up turning home like two hours later and saying to mum, dad didn't come, can you phone him and see where he is? And I sat for the rest of the day looking out the window, still thinking he was going to come, but yeah. he never did. So sad. Well, it was at the time, but yeah. you feel kind of stupid now, because as I got older, and obviously I have my older sister and my mum to tell me what he was like and what, you know, mm. fill in the gaps of my memory that I, because obviously I was very young, that I don't remember as much as Frankie, I kind of think, you know, you twat. <laughs> and yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go to his funeral now or anything, because it's kind of hard to... I can't forgive him for yeah. that. And as as an adult now, I still am really like, I still have nightmares and I still have yeah. flashbacks. And it's really, I don't think you can ever forgive someone for that. Did the police get involved at all? Yeah, there's there was a lot of incidents. I mean, he was very loud. He was six foot six in height, which is why I'm so tall. <laughs> um, and I mean, like, neighbours heard, you know, the shouts and stuff. Yeah and we'd had the police just turn up on the door halfway through. My mum had had to go to hospital a lot of times mm. because of certain things. But actually, the last time when she um, kicked him out, it was him that called the police because she'd stuck a knife in him. Not a full knife, yeah. I mean, it was just the tip of one, kind of like as a threat to defend her children, you know? Because yeah. um, she was still standing at this point, and... Um, he, uh, he got phoned the police and made this big drama of it, but there was too much evidence against him. Mm. Um, I mean, I still have scars, but at the time, me and my sister were just covered in cigarette burns yeah. and bruises and things, because he just used to, you know, willy-nilly. Mm. Um, there was just too much evidence to incriminate him, so... Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming in today and telling us about your story. Yeah, thank you. It's okay. If any of you lot out there have any troubles with domestic abuse or if you'd like any help or advice, just follow our link just below the screen and we'll get straight to you. Thank you very much.